Welcome, welcome. It must be Tuesday night because we're here and it's Confidence Strategies 101. I'm Carmen Milagro. I'm a confidence strategist, a CBD educator, an entrepreneur, a behavioral coach, and lots of other things that we won't get into because we don't have all that time. Um, I'm here with you every week, so thank you all for joining us again. We're, we want to share positive ideas, stories, resources, and I want to introduce you to incredible coaches and mentors, business executives, musicians, designers, artists, and all of this community so that when you need a little bit of help, you know where to turn to. That's the whole idea is for us to thrive together and share the resources. That's been my mission from day one, and I will continue to do that as long as I am able to do that. Of course, I always love it when you love or like and share our videos and make comments and engage with us. And so that's always appreciated. Tonight's web webisode, I got to talk properly today, um, is sponsored in part by Music City Hit Factory. And today we're chatting with someone who's very unique and very special and very specialized in what she does. Her name is Dr. Sandra Camacho. She's an auric field consultant. She's the creator of Inner Wealthy Woman. And she has a very specific, unique process for leveling up your entrepreneurship and allowing you to, you know, to to make the breakthroughs that, that you might be stuck on. We're going to break it all down for you and just sort of wrap it up in a nice little bow by the end of the show, or at least that's the goal. Um, let's bring Dr. Camacho on because I think the sooner we get started with her insights and what she does and allow her to share her story with us, the sooner we can get rolling. So please welcome. I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Sandra Camacho. Hello, Hello. Dr. <laughs> How are you? I'm great, Carmen. Thank you for having me on the show. I'm excited to be here. This is Hi. so fun. <laughs> Good. That's what we want. We want it to be informative and educational and fun, you know, just kind of relaxed and just let's just be ourselves and let's let's go on. So I wanted to start with you with this question for you. Um you have this, your website, and you do this work, but you do it under this banner of Inner Wealthy Woman. What does that mean to you, and why did you choose that as your umbrella for, for the work that you do? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Well, first of all, I really love supporting women to tap into their confidence, their inspiration, their motivation. And I think of that as inner wealth. Our life force energy really is our inner wealth. And when we're tapped into that life force energy, that creative energy, and we allow it to flow out of us in the, into the world, that's when we start manifesting success in a very organic way because that's our brand. It's our life force energy. It's our unique soul signature, you could say, mm -hmm. that's just being fully expressed, that unique aspect but whatever that uniqueness of who we are. If we're allowing ourselves to be fully expressed, then that's what engages people. That's what connects people to us is that unique way of whatever we're doing, what we're doing. <laughs> Our guest. Right. Yes, and that's and that's beautifully put. Thank you, because that really melds beautifully with what you know what we're trying to do here on this live. Every week we talk about confidence strategies, and that's something that I am also able to coach and help with, but I'm not this, you know, the cup of tea the same cup of tea for everyone, like different people need different areas of help. And so bringing your you know, guests like yourself is really important to me because I want to make sure that we're sharing our resources and the information. And I can't repeat that enough because I think that people forget that we can't do this alone, you know, and that there are different ways to get ahead in in the journey that you know they're trying to create for yourself and i know that you don't 
you don't always just work with entrepreneurs. I think that you work with other people in other areas of your life, of their life, if I'm not mistaken. Is that is that correct? I work mainly with entrepreneurs. Yeah. Okay. I get okay. once in a while, like I got a woman recently who I accepted as a client because I've known her for many years, mm -hmm. who wanted to meet her soulmate. So she wanted to work on releasing any inner blocks she might have about her having love in her life. And I oh. did that, but that's not my usual client. Right. So I, yeah, and I really, I, hope I, know. I, I actually really, what really turns me on is helping entrepreneurs and not just women. I'm actually starting to work more with men because I really believe when, when an entrepreneur starts their business, they right. really have something they want to share with the world. And, and, and they can get messages in childhood that can make it difficult for them to be visible, to get out there, to, to, right. to share their value, to communicate their value. A lot of times there are confidence issues because of right. the experiences they had as a child. Of course, they, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And so the work that I do, a lot of it is working with those early messages, eliminating so them so that the person's life force energy is just unblocked and allowed to flow out into the world. Right. Let their, their light can shine. Literally. literally right. Light I shine. love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that's fantastic. Now, you, you also, um, in your bio, you, you are known as an auric Field consultant. I don't know why I'm struggling with that word. <laughs> but, <Yeah. laughs> but what is an auric field consultant? How does that tie into your intuitive business coaching, or or is yeah. it two separate things? It's the, well, it's the, it's they're they're one and the same. They're very much tied into each other. So, an or what an auric field consultant means is the auric field is the energy field that makes up us it's the energy that creates who we are and our body sits in our energy field our energy field actually extends about three feet out from our body and there's actually seven layers to the field i don't want to get too technical about this. the the field that the <clears throat> the layer of the energy field that i work with is called the emotional body and that's where our subconscious thoughts and feelings are you know are um are live as as energy and by looking at that layer of the field, I can see the person's thoughts and feelings about whatever issue they're thinking about in that moment as colors. And those colors give me very specific information. So how I use it with my clients is I have them focus on a part of their business they're feeling, feeling challenged by because that is where their energy is blocked whenever we feel challenged or stressed right. or we have some kind of a negative um, quote negative unhelpful emotion our energy is blocked <clears throat> and, and very often the block is we're hitting up against an old program that's saying we need to be this way but our soul actually wants us to be a whole nother bigger way in the world right. and so the, we will get triggered and we'll need to in order to go to that next level of success mm -hmm. fulfillment visibility all those good things we need to break through those old programs that are saying either we can't do it we're not good enough we don't deserve it we're not smart enough all that stuff that we might have gotten from when our father yelled at us when we were five years old and dropped the eggs on the floor you know what i'm saying sure. so this this programming is very deep Right. And a lot of times, all my when my clients come to me, they suspect that they have some old messages in there that are making it difficult for them to market. They hate marketing their business. They wow. hate getting out there and doing, oh, my God, I can't do videos. That's a real common right. one. It's very uncomfortable for them to be visible. It can be very hard for them to communicate their value because they're hitting up against these limiting beliefs, these programs that are making it. And so when we when we get uncomfortable, we can also be blinded to what to to where we where we need to go, what we need to say, what we need to be doing, because the programming will get in the way of us even seeing that as possible. Like it might be in front of our eyes and then we'll go, oh, no, 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 <laughs> because right. the programming's not giving us permission to have it. 
So right. it's very big um, in terms of how much it influ influences us because our mm -hmm. subconscious mind is 95% of our energy consciousness. And that's where the programming lives. And that's what it's shaping all the time is our subconscious mind. So what I love about this work is that once we rewire, I call it rewiring some right. mind, once we pull out all those blocks, uh -huh. they, it's, it's very hard to go back to the limited, more limited self because it's kind of like once you know something, you can't unknow it. Once we see, oh my God, what was I doing to myself? That was nuts. Right. Once we see that, right. it's kind of hard to go on doing it. And so people, my clients make these breakthroughs that stay with them. I mean, I've had clients who I had a session with three years ago and they go, I still remember that <laughs> because the stuff is so deep and there, there's usually a really big energy shift that happens. Sure. So in essence, you're, you're helping them. I mean, I've, I've, I'm a very visual person and what, when you were talking, what I was, was seeing was this, this, you're literally helping people just make that breakthrough you know, like, like busting through the wall or, you know, instead of hitting your head up against the wall, you're helping them just clear it. Yes. Yes. Okay. Cause I can help them identify what the wall is. A lot of times people are hitting up the wall. They don't even know what the wall is. Right. They just know, oh, what am I hitting up against? I don't know. All I know is I can't get past this point. Right. right. This thing keeps happening. Why? Sure. Right. And is, is it sort of along the same lines as um, like repeat habits, like re repetitive behavior? And that's because of the programming. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, we get programmed. So even though behaviors can actually be limiting us, they're comfortable because we were wired that way. If we had, and this is this is sure. sad, but we see this with people sure. who had really critical parents or abusive parents, their mm -hmm. comfort zone is being small. Their comfort zone is not shining because they got the message that it wasn't okay for them to shine. Right. It wasn't okay for them to be the center of attention. It wasn't okay for them to be powerful, you know. Sure. And um, you know, whenever someone's had a critical parent, they they can get that messaging, and it can be you know challenging sure. for them to overcome it. To and that's one of my specialties is helping people with critical parents because that right. can be a handicap. For oh, sure. I mean, that's, I mean, it typically, right? Like that should be your most nurturing memory of typically and hopefully. I mean, you may not have both parents that are that nurturing, that that supporting your self-confidence and self-esteem and, and helping you grow in that way. You might only have one parent that does that. Mm -hmm. But at least you have someone. And then when you don't, then I could imagine that's really, I mean, for children specifically, yeah. you're, you're, yeah, I mean, I like the word that you're using of programming, because when a child is so malleable, and their parents are programming, programming them in that way, it stands to reason they're going to grow up to be adults that have been programmed in that way. And so yeah. you're helping them identify, it sounds to me, you're helping them to identify those blocks and reasons why, and then you're helping them to clear it out so that they can continue who be who they're supposed to be. Exactly. Right. Okay. Exactly. So that makes, that makes such perfect sense to me. Like it just, you really like were able to hone in that, that description for me yeah. and you mentioned something earlier that you see the colors can we talk a little bit about that so I have two questions that came up for me is if you're doing these I assume that you used to do them live and with people or were you always doing them you know just on the internet or how I I, yeah, I started out doing them because I started out seeing my patients colors when I was a chiropractor Oh, so okay. the, the people were in front of me. So okay, yeah. So how, got it. So because I can understand that because of course you know energy and light. But how does it work when you're? How do you see a person's colors when you're working with them? You know, online. Is it a different messaging or a, I? I don't understand how. If you could share with us how. <laughs> 
It's because probably one of those mysteries, but um, <laughs> because I actually work with a lot of clients over the phone. So I right. don't have their image in their physical image in front of them. Wow. But I see their colors in like I see their body and I ah. see their colors in my mind's eye. It okay. just comes into my mind's eye. And probably when I'm seeing them physically, the part of me that's seeing the colors is my mind's eye, you know. So it's 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 extrasensory perception. What can I tell you? It's right. one of those things that it's kind of hard to explain how sure. how because I, sure. I don't know how I do it <laughs> myself. Well, I just know no, know. that's right. how it happens. Right, but we all have special <laughs> gifts and talents. So you know, yours happens to be this. Yeah. Uh, but what do the, can you give us like a brief sort of rundown of what certain colors mean? Maybe not all of them, but at least to get an idea of like, what does a specific color mean when you're interpreting, you know, and, and you're working with someone? Well, why don't you give me an example of a situation and I'll tell you what colors I might see in somebody's field. That might be interesting. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. All right. Let's. Well, otherwise, it'll be, it might be boring for me to just say red. And red. You know okay. what I mean? So okay. <laughs> um, well, let's. Okay, let's see. We have. I'm trying to think of some of the the clients and some of the questions. So I have someone, for example, right now um, that I'm working with as a consultant, and the the shelter in place, like you know, as an artist, most most artists like myself we thrive and we live for being on stage and we love it. So we're not too shy about being on camera or being on a stage, but when that's taken away from him, he's really like really feeling disconnected and he's really feeling um, anxious. Like there's a lot of anxiety happening because he doesn't have that connection. You know, it's all, and yes, he has digital, capabilities that's not it's not he's not like me where I'm absolutely one of those tech challenged people I mean he's very comfortable in in you know getting on zoom calls and doing all of that but um but it's really causing him a lot of angst not to be able to connect with people live, so is it, in a live setting you're saying yes in a live so, setting. Ever, so there's so, so he now when you say angst is, is it anxiety or what what is specifically he's He's feeling anxiety or depression or both or. Um, well, I don't know about depression. I suspect that perhaps, yes, it is tight, but definitely anxiety for sure. Anxiety. Yeah. And and is he a musician? What, what just, what is yes, he? He's an artist. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So he's, he does performance art, right. some kind right. of performance art, and he hasn't been able to do any live performance right. art. And I know, and actually he's not the only one. There's a lot of artists, friends and musicians, friends of mine that are really talented and they are thieving to be in front of an audience right now. Well, my hit is it'd be something maybe in his first chakra where it's like because who he is is the performer that's like his identity right. and if he's not having that support of the audience it's bringing up all the stuff about um who am i you know i don't have an audience now and so it's almost like he's in an identity crisis or it's bringing up his um the security of of who am i and how do I get connected to my real self without having an audience? You know, right. so it's right. like he's and going through a, a growth period because he's going to somehow have to make pivot, like a lot of us have had to pivot in COVID. Right. Pivot, getting that same kind of nourishment, I guess you could say, energetic mm, nourishment. That's a great word. From doing virtual, from right. doing virtual events. And we may not be going back to live events for a while. And I right, for a while. Yeah. Is there a specific color that's associated to that? Yeah, I would say my hit it on it, I'm just, this is what yeah, I would imagine, course. what I would say is black in the first chakra, which is when someone needs to let go of, a, of an old way that used to make them feel emotionally secure, but they have to move to a new way of finding right. emotional security in who, in who they are and being who they are in the world in a different way. And right. so he's on a learning curve of how to do that. 
sure. Yeah. Wow, this is really this is really fascinating. Um, can we do one more? I have another yeah, example. This is fun. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. Um, so I have another, I have actually two uh ladies who they've had to reinvent themselves because of COVID, right? Because of the situation. Um, their entire business model is has they can't. They their one is in the in the travel ed- industry, like my like my former business. And the other one is, um, she's was basically the, the founder of a company they would, she was looking to create, um, organic, natural, um, home products, her own line of products. And Mm -hmm. with everything, both of them are sort of just now what, like my plan a is no longer going to suit me. I don't really have a plan B and now I've got to create a plan B. And so there's a lot of just anxiety. Right. Well, I would have to look at one at a time. I can't look at two gotcha. of them. So gotcha. we can talk about one, one of them sure. specifically sure. more. So maybe the travel one. Okay. So, okay. So she's, she, she was in the travel business. Now she's right. not. And so she's looking to pivot. Can you tell me more about how she? Um, from what I know, you know, she's she's stuck at an, in another state. She's she's from the Bay Area. She can't get back. Um, she's trying to figure out what do I do? Is my you know she doesn't know. There's just this whole uncertainty. Like, is her company going to go under? Is you know travel her high her her clients were. Um, like high end clients, private travel, you know, private planes. And now she doesn't know if that's even going to exist or if it does, how long is it going to take for it to, to get back on track kind of mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. And so she's having that. Disconnect. Well, my, yeah. 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 And so what does she do? Is, so she's working with you. Is she, is she? Is, no, no. T- totally separate. I work in property management. So oh, she's, oh, okay. other, so, but it's still hospitality, but two totally different fields. Um, and so she's like, what do I do? You know, what do I do next? So she's second guessing, you know, she's, she's just, should she hang on? Should she go somewhere else? Okay. That's kind of where so she's, she's still kind of like spinning around and confusing. Yes. Okay. So I would say just this would be is my hit. So I'm doing right. kind of virtual distant yes. psychic reading of their energy. Um my hit on it, if I looked at her field, she would sure. have to read in her third chakra, which is um when someone needs to step into their power, but they actually have a conflict about stepping into their power. Right. And, when, and when, as women, we get a lot of programming around power that can make it feel unsafe to take steps that would actually empower us because of the, the programming that most women have gotten from the patriarchy is men are powerful in the business world women are not women can be sort of powerful in the home so when women are being called to have to move into a new level of empowerment they'll hit up against that programming and that will keep them can keep them very stuck and make it feel very unsafe to just go ahead and do whatever they need to do to go to that next level of power sure that makes sense that makes a lot of sense it's that negative self-talk, isn't it? A lot of times that it, it stems from something that somebody said or did, but then it becomes that inner dialogue. Well, you know, I, I wouldn't even take it as far as negative self-talk because okay. the, the power of the subconscious mind is a lot of times it's not conscious. It'll just be, it'll just be like, I don't know what to do, or it'll be, I'm really upset or anxious. It will, sometimes it won't even get as far as negative self-talk because oh, yes. they won't even realize they're being run by the programming, which is making them stay small, stay disempowered. And that's actually like a comfort in, in a weird way is a comfort zone for the ego identity. It's just, a, you know, so when, whenever we go make a big change, it can be, uncomfortable for the ego identity sure. but um, i don't want to get into that but right um, that's part of it that's part of it so so what I, my point is a lot of times it won't even get 
as conscious as negative self-talk, it'll just be like, I don't know what's going on or why I'm stuck. You know what I'm saying? Sure, sure. Oh, this is even more fascinating than I than I thought. <laughs> because it's even because you're talking about something that like at least at least when you have negative self-talk, yeah. you know, you've already gone through a process of something that you've learned. This is prior to that. It's yes. so this is very, very yeah. deep. This is what's creating the negative self-talk. It, when it gets to that point where they have that much awareness that they're even having negative self-talk, they may not have any, like I'm saying, they may not have any ne negative self-talk. It may just be that they're depressed or they're unmotivated or procrastinating about everything. And on a conscious level, they don't think they have any negative self-talk. You know what I'm saying? They just don't know why things aren't happening. Right, right. No, that, yeah, I can see that. How, when, when you're working, how do you, how do, how do you vet or do you, is everyone a client, you know, that comes no. to you? How do you determine, <laughs> <No>. how do <laughs> you determine who your ideal client is? Well, my, I, my ideal client is someone who knows, first of all, who knows they have blocks and who know that there, there's some programming in there that needs to be removed. Right. And that they can't just mind power the, their way through it. The people that come to me, and this doesn't happen that often because they're usually not drawn to me, but I've had a few people come to me who are very much of, oh, just think positive about everything and everything will be okay. They don't want to go into, because the, the work that we do is almost, you could say shadow work because it's looking at the negative beliefs. It's identifying the negative beliefs. If they're really about, oh, I just want to be joyful and think positive, a lot of times it's not a fit for them because it's too uncomfortable for them to go into the, the negative beliefs or the limiting beliefs because it's too, it just is too uncomfortable. You know, people need to have a certain level of emotional security and who they are to go in and see the deep stuff that's not pretty. You know what I mean? That, oh, I really don't believe I deserve this or I really believe I'm not smart. Or, you know, if, they're, if their ego identity isn't strong enough to face those difficult limiting beliefs, right. they, but they really are not that comfortable with the process. And, and I can usually pick those people up before they, they usually are not going to me because they get a sense of when they talk to me. Like, <laughs> we just see, you know, everything that's in there. Like they say, you know, if you're cleaning a house, you have to see the dirt. You have to see yeah. the dirt. You can't pretend the dirt isn't there. Oh, if I think positive, there's no dirt. No, right. the dirt's still there. You right. just that's a great analogy for a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so, a great analogy. You, know, you have to see. So the point really of this work is seeing what's really true for for the client what's right. really in alignment with them on a soul level that's their truth and sometimes it can be not what they thought it was but the whole point is when you're in alignment with your truth your life force energy you're completely integrity in complete integrity so your life force energy just flows out in a very confident natural way because you're just expressing whatever is coming into your heart and soul and mind and sharing with the world and people are going and the people who are your soul tribe will be like, Oh yeah, that's interesting. Or I like that. Right. <laughs> and the people are not, well not, and that's fine <laughs> because they're right. not, you know, sure. people. Right. You know. Okay. That makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense too. Is there I was when you were just speaking, there was now I just lost it. Um oh I just had a question. It was so good. It'll come to me. <laughs> oh, you were talking about soul. You were talking about, uh, I think, yeah, it was something along those lines. Oh, I know what I was going to ask. So when, when you're working with a client and during that process where you're, you know, you're, 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 you're intuitive, you're, you're in, you know, getting into their colors and you're interpreting what that means. Is it an approach where it's, is it more like for you? Is it like an engagement or is it more of no, this is what I'm seeing, this is what I'm reading, and let me let me tell you? It, or is it like or do it's you have the latter. 
I know it is. It's, okay. It's definitely the latter because when I see colors, sometimes I'll see a color in someone's field. And to me, it'll be like, what the heck is this? I have no idea. This doesn't make any sense according to what they told me. Right. And I'll just describe the color and what it means. And they'll go, oh, that has to do with it. And it will just take the whole session in a completely different direction because there was another piece in there that had something to do with right. a whole nother issue. And that's okay. so, so it's almost like, I don't know how to explain it, but it's almost like reading a language or something. It's very objective. It's like the information is very objective, you know, sure. and then I say, well, I see this and it means this, does this make sense to you? Do you know what this is about? Who knows? And they'll say, oh yes, it's this or that, <laughs> or, you know. <laughs> Got it. Ah, okay. Into it. Yeah. Right. How long have you been? You mentioned that you were a chiropractor. Are you still a chiropractor as well, or no? No, I don't. I don't do the color. Ah, okay. Yeah, I, I I moved more into the colors because it got to the point where I would work on someone's body and I would get bombarded with all this information that I was. I mean, it's it's kind of strange to talk about this, but it's like the information would not go away unless I talked about it. And then I'd be working on their body and it was like doing so many things. And what I realized is so many people with chronic illnesses, they have very deep subconscious blocks that are blocking their life force. And I, and I started to get, I started to lose my interest in that kind of healing because I wanted to work directly with the life force energy. And I wanted to work with people who were on that cutting edge of really sharing their life. I mean, really allowing their life force energy to get out there into the world. Those are the people I really like. Sure. People sure. with chronic illnesses, they can actually have programming that makes it hard for them to heal. Sure. Sure. It's very sad, but I, I, yeah, that just really like I just as you were saying that I I felt this sadness because I mean it's true that there's there's so many things that our body hold on to you know our physical bodies hold on to and if it's that deep and that I mean that could be really devastating physically emotionally spiritually yeah so. Yeah. yeah, I mean it's powerful to work on that level, but but it also the person has to really be ready to change at that deep level, and not everyone is. And it's it for me it was it's heavy to work with someone who is in a conflict about change, good right. health change. Yeah, right, right. So, like entrepreneurs are just like, yeah, yeah. I want to get out there and do it. <laughs> So oh, I love that, you know, they're sure. ready to step into their power. They're ready. They want to create their world. They're ready to take responsibility. I mean, they're ready to take full responsibility of what's going on and they're all over it. And that's why I love working with entrepreneurs. Right. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. That, uh, yeah, that absolutely. And I think that you're right. I think a lot of times, I mean, to be an entrepreneur wherever you are on your journey, you, you always have to be ready for change. You always have to be ready for just the unexpected. And, you know, when you are stuck, you look for the things that help you get unstuck. So I think that's the bow that we were, that I mentioned earlier, we're just kind of wrapping it all up in that bow where what you do, I think is really important. And the fact that you're focused on entrepreneurs and just from hearing you, cause I didn't know this, you know, you and I have spoken before, but I didn't know this component. Now it all like it. I feel like it all just kind of stacked together and all makes sense now. Why you work with entrepreneurs, the mindset of an entrepreneur and how this could be such a huge, huge help for anyone who's in that position that's looking to to get cleared and and unblocked so that they can go do what they need to do. Exactly. So that sounds pretty powerful. Thank you so much. I really, I really enjoyed this. So I learned so much more. So um, for me, it's very helpful too. <laughs> Great. And um, and where can where can people get a hold of you? And how do they, you know, connect with you? I think that's really for everyone, you know, listening and who's going to do the watch parties and tune in later. You know, how do they get a hold of you if they would like more information on what you do? 
Sure. sure. The best way to get a hold of me is on my website, innerwealthywoman.com. And I have a lot of free stuff on there. I have a master class. I have a guide to um, <clears throat> common success blocks that women have. I have a quiz on are you emotionally aligned with wealth. There are lots, there's a lot of free stuff on there. There's also a place where you can request a free consultation. I offer a free 30-minute consultation if someone wants to find out more about working with me and what that would entail. And if it would be a fit for them, you can do that too. Great. That's fantastic. Thank you. I, I went ahead and put that innerwealthywoman.com. That's how you can be reached the easiest way. And um, before we wrap for the night, is there is there something that you would like, um, you know, people to take away from this conversation? I really was hoping and I think we did a really nice job of explaining what you do and breaking it down into into, you know, digestible information, because clearly everyone's path is different every time that you work with someone it's their own unique experience working with you so but the examples that you gave us i think were really great um but is there something that you would like to leave everyone with um just anything that comes to mind trust yourself trust yourself trust what your your, your heart is telling you because that is the seat of our guidance a lot of times and it will inspire us don't second guess yourself trust yourself go with the flow of your life force trust where it wants to go and let it support you in creating a life that you love <laughs> Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. I really thank you for sharing that. I, I say the same thing in, in different words, of course, but <laughs> yeah. um, I think you are so much more articulate than I usually am. Oh. <laughs> so thank you. And I appreciate I know, you know, it's it's Tuesday night. You're you know, you should be relaxing. The day is over. So I really do appreciate that you took this time. You know, we we're, we did pretty well. I think we covered a lot of ground in just under 40 minutes. So I do appreciate, you know, you taking this Tuesday evening to share your insights with us and how this can help, you know, with the confidence strategies and other strategies that entrepreneurs are usually looking for. So thank you. Thank you. It was great having having being on the show. And <laughs> oh, actually, that reminds me. Before you go, you also have a show. We should talk about that as well. Before oh, you leave. yes. Let's do that. My show this reminded me. I have a show, and it, I I have it. Uh, I broadcast it every two weeks on my Facebook page, Inner Wealthy Woman, on Fridays at 1 p.m. Every other Friday, I have a show this Friday, and it's called Removing Blocks and Opening to Abundance. And in the show, I actually do a live auric field reading of my guest, and we clear, we read the field, and we clear her blocks, and the aud as uh, participants in the audience clear the blocks as well because the programming that we all get is pretty much we pretty much get the same programming to okay. in our culture there's a lot of universal limiting beliefs so we all clear those limiting beliefs together and it's very fun and people usually i get great feedback from people who watch the show and tell me they made breakthroughs just by watching the show so it's that's fantastic it's called aura power for entrepreneurs great Thank you so much. Thank you for the work that you do and the way that you do it. I think it's really important that everyone, you know, be open to different tools and different resources. And I'm really happy that we got to share what you do here tonight. Thank oh, you. Thanks, Carmen. It was great being on the show. Thank you so much. Yeah. We'll be in touch again. For sure. <laughs> bye. Take Thank care. you. Thank bye you. Bye-bye. Bye. And that is, we're just wrapped up with, we just wrapped up with Dr. Sandra Camacho. I'm very excited to learn much more in depth of the work that she does and how she does it. I think it's important that we all, you know, keep our options open, keep our minds open to different resources and different approaches to the challenges that we find in our lives as entrepreneurs and vice versa. So um, I just a great big thank you again to Dr. Camacho. Um, I wanted to also mention that this coming weekend, there is another 
resource that I'd like to share with you, but let me let me switch over here so I can read and tell you more about it. It's the Mindful Movement. It's a virtual conference on Saturday, August 15th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. It is hosted by Live and Thrive California. And you can check on their Facebook page for the tickets. I believe tickets are available through Thursday. Don't quote me on that. Just go to their Facebook page, Live Thrive California. And they're, they've got different guest speakers. They've got over $2,000 in prizes and giveaways. And the whole idea for this resource is they want to help you create a limitless mindset, live a more fulfilled life, and live in the present. So to get a major dose of inspiration, check it out. That's Saturday, August 15th. Just wanted to give them that little shout out. And then as always, I wanted to thank our sponsor for allowing me to record here in the studio. We're, we're under construction, as I mentioned before, but I'm very grateful that Music City Hit Factory is allowing me to record in this studio space. I can't wait for the project to be finished. Not sure exactly when that's going to be yet, but I'll keep you posted. And once again, if you have any questions, I'd love for you to just, you know, type in a question and we'll I'll I'll do my best to answer everything as it comes up in the in the feed on my Facebook page. That's where you'll find the Tuesday night uh, webisodes on YouTube and uh, Confidence Strategies the group page. I really enjoy this time with you. I, once again, thank you to my special guest this evening, Dr. Sandra Camacho, for sharing some really insightful pieces of the work that she does. And I put in her website in the thread already. It's inner wealthywoman.com if you're interested in the work that she does and you need some help clearing out some of those blockages she's the person to go to if you're open just be open to all the resources that we're bringing you here on confidence strategies 101 that's all i ask that's our main goal and that's the show for tonight um we'll see you next tuesday at seven o'clock and next tuesday we are going to be speaking to angelica gonzalez Gonzalez. She's a spiritual and resilience life coach. She's based out of Texas. So I'm very excited that we're going to get a chance to talk with her next Tuesday. That's seven o'clock Pacific Standard Time here on Confidence Strategies 101 with Carmen Milagro. Thank you all. Have a great evening. Stay safe, stay healthy. Until next week, talk to you then. Bye-bye.